Hi everyone, how are you? Happy summer. My name is Dame DC Cordova and I'd like to welcome all of you to this wonderful hour that we're going to spend about distinctions and systems. And this is a gift for all those, all those of you that have done logistics for money and you in the past and for those of you that may be considering it and are going to be in future money and you logistics team. It is always so exciting for me to be able to share distinctions and systems and today is a really hot day in Southern California for those of you down under and I know how cold it is over there <laughs> sorry about that and uh, so this is going to be seen globally originally Eric Murray whom I'm going to have speak in a few minutes he and I had had this conversation about how can we empower more the people that want to be in logistics and want to support us um, and then we thought, why not give them some training in additional things that I sometimes I'm not at Money and Use. I'm very little uh, in the Money and Use in Malaysia, in the English ones, and in other countries. And I'm, it's been years since I've been to a Chinese Money and You. But that is because I have set all the systems in place, so it's not necessary for me to be there. And there is a structure, there is a whole fruit bowl that, that I created about 35 years ago that has been tested and proven and improved and supported by many others. And at this point, what I like to do is I like to really acknowledge Di Butler. Uh, Di Butler um, is a Money and You Business School graduate and a graduate of all of our programs originally. She came to do a program called Nuts and Bolts of Organizations, which was all about systems. And of course, she's already a systems queen. And uh, it was fantastic because in the late 90s, she was training to be a program director, actually a little bit earlier, forgive me, die. It was earlier than that. She started much earlier. And But one of the things that she decided to do was to take it upon herself to support us with the manuals, with the production manuals. And just recently, we sent them in to have them all copyrighted. This big, three of them three of them. When you print out the whole production manual, what we call the program director manual, and every single thing that really needs to be done, it is that big. And so thank you so much, Di, for all the improvements and all of the different systems that you supported us. So in other words, once a system is created, you need to have other people that would look at it, will improve on it, and get a lot of feedback. So, but what I like to do is I like to introduce uh, Eric Murray. He is from Southern California. He is training to be program director. He's logistics supervisor for the up and coming Money and You in San Diego. And um, he's keeping me company while I'm doing this Google Hangout for you. So, Eric, what would you like to say? What would you like to share? Well, it is definitely great company that we are keeping here together, so honored for that. And then I'm just so honored that everyone on this call and on the recording in our logistics team already excited about what's coming up in August and then what's coming up in Cancun in November. It's a whole new energy I really feel that I've seen around logistics and the team because we really do, we know that Money New doesn't happen without logistics. And this excitement and the people that keep coming back and we're getting Great veterans from the past, love, love seeing everyone coming back from the past, and some really young and fresh faces, and that mix, and the dynamic, and, and everyone that's already saying we want to be part, people from China are already coming, Canada, um, back East Coast, so this excitement and build it is not hypey, right? It's real, it, because everyone is really seeing that how well they're supported on logs, and what they really get after serving and giving for just... You know, we talked about it last time, is the distinction was like, we only have to be excellent for three and a half days. Only, right? And so just flipping that from, oh my gosh, this is long and hard and, and arduous, to only three and a half days of performing in excellence, I think we can do that. And that's what we're doing. And that's why, you know, so excited about this today, because systems are so important um, in my business and in my life, right? I find that when I'm applying the systems and correcting them, everything is running smoother on all facets from... Um, from the money part to the love part, and um, I'm so excited that we get to learn a lot more here today. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. So thank you for taking the time and your worldly travels and 
and beaming us live today. So it's wonderful. So thank you. Thank you so very much. You know, I just saw a little message from Carol Dysart. I think she's looking for the link to be able to get into the chat with us. So if you don't mind sending Carol uh, the, the, the actual link that I sent you only half an hour ago so that she can have that. We'll I do. think we're watching the other one. Anyway, okay. okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna come back and switch it over to me. So what I what I wanted to say was that um, when you are looking at doing logistics for money and you, is I'd like you to be really selfish and really center on yourself. What is it that you would like to get out of it? How can we serve you? How can you use money and you and the systems that we have put in place? in order for you to advance and get better in your business, to get better in your organization, and for you to improve your profitability, your productivity. So this has to be a win-win proposition. We so appreciate it that you come and assist, and uh, depending on what city you're in, for instance, I know that in Malaysia they have waiting lists for people to get into the team. Sometimes they have as many as 35 people in the team. And uh, sometimes um, they have nothing but experienced people, then it takes a little while to get in new people. And that's because there is a camaraderie that gets created. There's a team thing that gets created, but I'm always supporting all of the different promoters and letting people know around the world that it's good to bring in new people and let the, um, the people that are really interested to work their way up to possibly being assistant logistics supervisor, logistics supervisor, and then for those that really want to uh, step up, they can become program directors. So let me just give you a little bit of background because I think that sometimes people don't realize uh, the level of perfection that our team has have gone into. And let me say this, no matter how many systems you have in place, and remember Edward Stemming told us that when there is any challenge in any organization, including in Money and You, you have to look at that 94% will be systems and 6% will be people. Where there are moments that sometimes it feels it's like the other way around, and that is because no matter how long I have been doing this, the human factor comes in, and I have had at least conversations for decades with people when they say, we have to put in system in place so that people's emotions don't come up. Well, that is not going to happen until we are probably all walking on water. The whole nature of, of being in a team, working on a team on a very intense, um, a situation on an intense environment is that feelings are going to be coming up and it is because we we are not only working together under pressure and and so everybody's patterns come up what happens is that all of a sudden people want to go ahead and 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 be a certain way and and their stuff comes up and then they think it's outside of them so what I want you to do is as you're thinking about coming in or you have already been in, there's nobody out there. There's nobody out there. Every judgment that you have, every thought that you have, every experience that you have is coming from within. When you really practice that for the four days that you're with us, there is a possibility and there is such an opportunity for you to advance at such a big level. It's actually a combination of doing the basic landmark and the advanced landmark. Right, Eric? <laughs> sure, absolutely. I mean, it's like what happens is that your stuff comes up. And if you have an opportunity to be able to look at it, you say, wow, you know, all of a sudden I really want to please everyone. And I just want to tell you a very quick story. The only time that we have had major drama in Money and You from a logistics team that showed up in the front of the room of Money and You that had to be handled in front of the room, in front of everyone, was in 1980 when a gentleman by the name of Landon Carter, who was an EST trainer, came to do Money and You, and he had created a thing called the Six Day Program, and Landon Carter was like the bomb. If you were an S graduate and if you were around at that time, he was like, everybody adored him. 
And what happened was that I kept inviting people to come and do Money at You that had been my trainers, that I knew that had done a lot of work with AST and other organizations. And we were really gaining a lot of speed and you know, we, we were becoming you know, the, the bomb already. People were going, you've got to go do this Money at You. And he shows up and of course all of my training in logistics had come from, at the time, had come from uh, AST, which later you know, became Landmark Education. And I'm so excited and I told the whole team, I said, listen, I said, one of the masters is going to be in the room. I want everything to be perfect. Now it's everyone clear. I want to run. I did extra training. We do rules of the game. We do the meditation. We do all these things. Everyone clear. Sure enough, <laughs> about 48 hours into Money and You, and there was a time for sharing. And this woman raises her hand, and I don't know why Marshall let her come up, she was in logistics and she goes in front of the room and starts sharing about all the stuff that's happening in the back of the room that is happening in the logistics team and everything was blamed. I mean, I was the monster of all monsters. She didn't take one bit of responsibility and what was going wrong and this and that and that. And of course, it was so powerful. I had to take 100% responsibility that this angel had gone to something to so much reaction and the only thing she could think about was punishing me by going in front of the room and telling the whole class and I literally had to take responsibility for that and I knew I had created that because I for probably the first time in my life I was so much more important than money and you it was all about me looking good in front of Landon Carter and everybody else and I think that that lesson taught me forever for me to train and to put it into the system that when you come to assist at Money and You or any other program, this is about you being of service to the participants and to the logistics team, to the logistics supervisor who is in service to the program director and the program director is in service to the instructor and the instructors in training and the instructor ultimately is in service to the participants so it creates this beautiful cycle and as you know and th those of you that have assisted before I am a great proponent that when anything is going really crazy in the room what I ask my program directors to do is to get everyone together and do a clearing even if you have to be doing it at every break for you to do a clearing on what's going on with each and every person in the room, excuse me, in the logistics team, so that you begin to see the miracles that will occur, and they sometimes say what miracles, because all of a sudden you're finding yourself that you are, you are seeing that as you change, the whole room changes. So if there's a lot of anger in the room. I actually ask, you know, okay, you guys, let's get together. In the old days when I used to run the rooms myself, I would, you know, in the old days, we used to stay up until 3 in the morning in the logistics team, clearing each and every person to make sure that there was such clarity, such intention. Of course, we had to stop that because, you know, people were very, very tired, and it became such a deep process, and the word got out, especially in Australia. If Jane uh, Jordan and other people are looking at this, she's probably on the floor laughing, because in Australia, we were there for nine years, and then what happened was that it became such a big thing to be in the logistics team, and part of it was the deep, deep clearing that we were doing. And now what I found through the years and as I duplicated myself and then other people came to be leading you know, program directors that the drama began to disappear. Now I wonder if that had anything to do with me. <laughs> and, and it began to get more and more calm, more and more calm so that now we are in a place that stuff still comes up but it is so peaceful and it also has to do with my process. You need to understand that even though I don't show up to Money and News, whenever there's some Money and You going on, and I even do this with the Chinese programs, I really pray and I'm center and I'm clear and I hope that what I'm going to do is I'm going to affect the whole energy of Money and You so that we can go very deep. And this is, 
this is the thing about the program. The deeper that you go within yourself without drama, the more that the participants will go into it and the more supported that that logistics supervisor will feel because that is your leader and then the more supporter, supported that the program director will feel and then he or she will feel so supported that then they can be a hundred percent there for the instructor and then the instructor can feel a hundred percent there for all the participants. You have no idea how much it affects the instructor when they see that the room is not in alignment in the back of the room. And this is now, as you begin to see that through the weekend, that will have a tremendous effect on how you will experience your life from the time that you come to be with us and then you go back to your real business. So we have had people, for instance, in Colorado in the 80s, we had a gentleman by the name of Rick and I was hoping that I would have gotten his last name by this particular hangout and I've asked my friend Jamie and, um, and if anybody is on the line that's from Colorado from the 80s can remind me the name of this gentleman. He was one of Colorado's richest entrepreneurs and he started out just doing certain jobs in the logistics team and you need to understand that every job is important. It's literally like we have these cars with these wheels and every wheel is important. There isn't one job that isn't as important as the other. When I used to assist at the S training, one of my jobs was to be an assistant to the trainers. Uh, I, I can share some more stories about that a little later. That is one of the most, used to be one of the most privileged jobs that you could have in EST. And the reason was that I had that job because I was considered to be in that organization a no-brainer. And let me tell you what a no-brainer is in, in that definition. You can figure it out. A no-brainer is a person that follows directions exactly as they told. And I'll never forget this because they were testing me, but I didn't know this. And I was in the back of the room and what they call the supervisor of the training, which was the equivalent of our program director, said to me, DC, put everything down, I want you to go do this. And my brain looked around and there was nothing for me, to, no, no table or anything for me to put anything down on. But it was like my brain said, well, if you're going to put something down, you have to put it on something. And, but it was moving very quickly and I, it, I probably took only one second. And I asked a question, I asked a clarifying question because that was the appropriate thing to do. And I said, oh, you want me to put it down? And they said, yes, we want you to put it down. And I just put everything, I had a handful of things, and I put everything down on the ground, on the floor, which at the moment, the way the situation was, people gasped around me because it felt like it was the inappropriate thing to do when it was actually the perfect thing to do because I was being asked to just put things down. And in those, in those teams, when, when people felt that you were not in your body, they used to ask you to go in the back parking lot and go and pick up cigarette butts and go and clean out trash until you came back into your body and could come back into the room so that you could serve. Very tough training, believe me, because your ego would take a bashing. And the biggest thing was that people all wanted to be in the S room because there was so much excitement and everything was happening. And, and of course, I also wanted to be in the room, but being a trainer assistant had to be outside a lot. And, I, and then one day, my beautiful Melanie Bernanke, which was my, my beautiful center manager, she passed away of cancer in her 40s. She was my greatest logistics trainer and sales trainer that I ever had. She could tell that my brain was doing something and she said, DC, the minute that you step into saying, yes, I'm going to assist, I'm going to support, you have started the training. You are in the training. So when you're on your way to pick up sushi for the trainer, you watch everything that's going on around you, the traffic, how people are treating you, what's going on in the outside world, and you are in the training. So for you, the training is your universe that gets created and the results will be how well you serve the trainers. And your job is to only serve the trainers 
which will serve the class. And believe me, I have never forgotten that. So for me, 24-7 became my life about being in an S training and then later being in a money and you room and being in a business school for entrepreneurs room. So the whole world became a training room for me, which it really is. So I want you to really use your experience on coming to do logistics to accelerate your process of serving, of clearing, of working, and do it in such an elegant manner. You don't have to suffer the way that I did or others. And you can go ahead and find that center within you. So I want to go to Eric and have him give me a little bit of feedback and his experience of what I'm saying. Well, absolutely. That, that's what I wrote down is when you say yes, the minute you say it's about decisions, right? You make a decision, but this work is so deep that it starts activating you immediately, right? And even and, and if you're aware of that going into it, that you see that you get you show up because the funniest thing is you show up everywhere you go, right? You can't help that because there we are. But that you're now activated in this in this higher way of thinking, in these in process and in synergy and mastery and everything else that comes with it. And as and as, as long as you're expanding, you are in it 100%. And the carryover afterwards, every single program uh, that I've participated in in logistics, that I'm so in it the day after. I mean, and I don't. I take my week off. You bet. But my mind is so still with the teachings, the learnings, the immersion that we do um, with the students and the participants, but our team as well, because we stay late and we do a lot of that same stuff, a lot of decompressions and, and feedback and connections, and we are so in it that it just carries over and over, and I'm elevated for weeks and weeks after. And then it, when opportunities come to get my healings and my learnings and my course corrections, I can go. I go right back to the learnings, and the biggest one that I got at was leverage from last time. You know, I always get something, but leverage, and we always say you're working too hard, right? The whole room is repeating hard, and I heard hard this time, and I said it one time on a Saturday night, I think, hard, and I started to cry. I really start because I realized that I wasn't applying leverage in my business at all, because it's like I'm in my studio right now, and it's still just me, right? Now I have some other great people and things are getting much better that way, but I realized I was not applying this particular distinction nowhere near my business because it was just me doing it and I started to cry because I finally it finally came in after four years that I'm working way too hard. And so now that one has been with me all the way through and all I do is keep improving on that and I've seen massive result, results, big changes by actually applying leverage in my business. So yeah, you bet. Good stuff. Thank you so very much. That was such a great, great uh, distinction. Thank you so very much. So one of the things, for instance, I, I want to start talking about systems right now because many of the systems in logistics and many of the systems in very well-run organizations are almost invisible. So the one thing that you will do for those of you that haven't assisted before, you're going to say, yes, okay, I want to be in the logistics team. And then what happens is that you'll come in and that you will have somebody that will contact you and you will connect with them. In this instance here in Southern California is Eric. Eric is connecting with everyone. Of course, Jane Buston in our Southern California office has done such a great job through the years connecting everyone. And, um, and so one of the things, the office is always available to you and then we connect you to Eric. So when we ask you to get there in the morning, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, sometimes it depends on, on the uh, logistics supervisor and the program director, and you'll have an opportunity to kind of like unpack things. And again, you really need to go in within the system that you're here to serve and that you are going to get so much out of it. And your only job is to follow directions you are not here to create any systems or for you to give any input on the systems. Now, let me tell you the word systems. The word systems, uh, Kiyosaki and I uh, have a program that we created called Creating Wealth. And we decided to play a fun blocks game in Creating Wealth. And don't worry, I've been thinking about doing Creating Wealth in America. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it next year. 
and everyone has to be a money and you graduate in the room and it's just so much fun. And so we play a blocks game in Creating Wealth which is the total opposite of the money and you blocks game because this is the Kiyosaki Cordova version of it and Dominic is that leads Creating Wealth with me and then later we'll have carry another instructors leading Creating Wealth with me. What We just so love playing that game that night. And, uh, and so the way that people demonstrate is the total opposite. There is no essence. <laughs> you have to demonstrate what it really means. And so the groups that, do, and we have completely different words. And one of the words that Kiyosaki and I thought about was the word systems. Because as the years went by, we started noticing that people really didn't understand systems. Now, when you look up that word in the dictionary, it has a certain definition. When you speak about, uh, when you study Edward, Edward Stemming, his definitions are amazing. But the one, one, of the, one of the things that we took from, from Edward Stemming is that sometimes systems will sh make the invisible visible. And what we ended up after having a lot of conversations with people in the instructor's training program, a lot of the very successful money and you graduates and all these different people, we decided that we were going to go ahead and do, um, have two definitions of systems. One of them is that a system is duplicatable. Okay? It has to be able to be duplicated over and over and over again, whether you're there or not. You have to duplicate, it has to be duplicatable, and it has to be self-correcting. And what we mean by that, that within the system, it will immediately show you the mistakes. Now, this is when people sometimes start getting very perturbated because the system will show very quickly a mistake, and their tendency is to make wrong the leaders, make me wrong, make the instructor or the program director or the, the assistant logistics supervisor, whatever, when it's actually the system is just showing that a correction needs to be made. And the program directors are trained to see that, the logistics supervisor are in the process of learning that. So it's time to put a correction and you move on. And you do it very quickly, the way that Linda Chandler, a past instructor in the business school, used to say, you know, you, you fail fast, you correct fast, and you move fast. You know, you just do it everything very quickly. Don't get stuck. In business, you're going to fail. And this was the very core thing that that very rich man in Colorado, Rick, he came up in the ranks of doing all these different jobs. He became my logistics supervisor. At the time, it was only me and a gentleman by the name of Dwight O'Neill that was what we call high L, high logistics, like high D, high I, high C. He was high L, high logistics. Later we changed that name to program director. And uh, he was my high L at the time, the, only the two of us. Rick, who was one of Colorado's richest men, who owned some of the largest, the largest banks in Colorado, fell so in love with logistics. And he used to make some major mistakes because he was the rich cowboy guy from Colorado and here he would come in and be my logistics supervisor and make mistakes and at the time, this was the early 80s, the 80s, I was still an S graduate. <laughs> in those days we still did a little bit of yelling, right? So I used to yell at him at certain moments, you know, when he would make mistakes. I was pretty young still and everybody would like, oh my gosh, she's yelling at Donald Trump or, you know, she's yelling at Warren Buffett or at Bill Gates because he had that status just about in Colorado. And I would just, they would all be in shock. And I would say, don't be in shock. He's my logistics supervisor and you deserve a yelling. He goes, you can yell to me all you want. He says, you, I'm learning a lot. Go ahead, give it to me. He was so fabulous. He took us to visit his organization once and his boardroom was filled with money and you flip charts about making correction, you know, the, the fruit bowl and all these things. He probably validated to me logistics more than anyone else that I ever met at that time. There has been many validations at the time. And then I realized the importance of systems. He was learning so many systems experientially in his body. 
and and of course he had the rules of the game to take with him. We had done the alignment meeting that when you get there at nine o'clock in the morning, we'll get together and pack. You're very clear. Then we do an alignment meeting. You get, we'll do a meditation, which is really important to clear the room of anything that should be in the room. We have a little visualization on how we want the room to be. Then you get given very clear rules of the game on how you're going to participate as a person in the logistics team. This is very, very important for you to know. You have very clear rules of the game. You agree to it. We clarify it. Then you go to work. A lot of teams around the world make a lot of mistakes because people just put people to work. You have to have them land there. You have to have the I feel like saying, the meditation, the rules of the game, clarify that, and then you give them their job descriptions. And sometimes we give the job description to the, to the person that wasn't the most appropriate, and in the middle of it, we can change. And we can ask people, do you feel comfortable or uncomfortable with your job? And a lot of times people say, I feel extremely uncomfortable, but I'm here to serve. I'm not here to be comfortable. So let me keep going, and I'm going to learn something. Love that. I love that. Because then people are breaking through. Because all of us have an ego. And our ego loves to be comfortable. You know, sometimes when I sit, and you can't really see it, right behind me is my favorite teddy bear chair. <laughs> it is the most beautiful chair on the planet. And over here is my huge television that is a rocking TV. It looks the highest definition I could find. And I, and I sit on my chair to watch my favorite shows, and I'm total comfort. It's ultimate comfort. You know, it's like, and I just want to live like that forever. It ain't going to happen. We're having a human experience. But I notice that when I put myself in situations, which I do all the time, that are uncomfortable for me, I know that I put myself there and that that is going to allow for me to be more comfortable and feel safer in the world. So that is part of the system. So what we're doing now, what you need to do in your own organizations, and when you come to assist that money in you, I want you to, to take a look at all the different things that we do, and then just go, how can I adopt that in my business and in my organization? How can I adopt the rules of the game? How can I do alignment meeting? How can I do this and that? Like when I'm involved in a really big project, when I have a deadline, I always get everybody to come in and check in with me at about 11 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday maybe. Even if the meetings are only for 10 minutes, every Tuesday at 11 o'clock, we have a meeting. The whole team, even if they're around the world, needs to come together. Who needs what? What, what is needed? And I set a context in place. So we know that the rules of the game, the contextualization, the rules of the game, and uh, in money and you are the fruit bowl. So many of you are having learning experiences in your businesses because you don't set a strong enough context. Very clear rules of the game. And you, you make it clear to people that this is your system, this is your organization. And that there will be a system in place for them to give you feedback afterwards. And that is something that sometimes people used to get very upset with me because they wanted to be able to be quality controllers of the organization every night. And that is not set up. Our system is not set up for that because everyone has a vision on what systems should be like. One of the things you need to understand, and this is why we have policies. Once you set a system in place, then you have a policy in place, and that policy only changes if you have enough agreement from enough people on what, why that change should occur. And this is really important because like one of the things that we still run into this challenge a lot for me, which is music. And in, the, in music, people say, well, you know, we want to, and, and rightly so, we want to have a lot of, we have a lot of young people now, and the music that sometimes I have a tendency to play are from the 70s and the 80s. But the music we're looking for are the top 40 
the top 100 on the planet that they're going to hear on the radio again, but that the generations will hear. So this is something that's very, very crucial. So even though, believe me, I love hip hop. I watch MTV, you know, or well, the one that used to be on music. I still watch MTV. I, I listen to a radio station in San Diego, two of them. I listen to some pretty hard rock, new music, hip hop, you know, and some pretty intense music. And I also listen to jazz. But you know what? I can't have that through Money and You. I, I, I like that music. So there is a system in place even for music. And so it's not about what we want. It's about what's going to work after the participants leave. And what, that's, um, that's what friends are for. Get played an X number of times in every radio station that probably a certain age group will, will listen to. And then there's these other songs that even sometimes, you know, the great song now, you know, the happy song, you know, gets played in different places. So the thing is that you want to go ahead and have people be activated to that song when they hear it on the radio or they see it in a movie that like the song Celebration, the song We Are Family. We Are Family continues to be one of the top 40 songs ever. And so it's cross-generational. Now, I don't know if we're going to be playing We Are Family in about 50 years, but it is so interesting that we've been around for 35 years and it still plays. Now, I know that there are some program directors and some friends right now that are rolling their eyes because they really think it's my idea. But we learned this from Georgie Lawsonoff. And one of the things that you need to understand, I had a wonderful Money and You graduate. His name is Terry Tillman. Terry Tillman is one of the greatest trainers, and he did it with uh, one of the other transformational programs. There's six of us that have been around for nearly 40 years, and he was one, a trainer in one of them. And when he came to do Money and You, he could not believe that we still played. It's about time. We are family, celebration, and a bunch of the other songs that we play. He went back to his training and put him put those songs back in because he realized that there were no songs that could anchor people that deeply and has now become part of his system. So the thing about systems is not about what works for you, it's what works for them and getting the feedback. But I don't want to get into a long conversation about music right now. I'm just, I was just showing you an example of what works for others as opposed to what works for us. So Eric, let's talk to you a little bit about what you have learned about systems. Wow. I was thinking about music still, and that one is such a hot button with so many people because, you know, it's so passionate, right? It's so close to us, and when we think it's from the 70s, maybe we discount it because it's from the 70s, which is the very opposite thing to be thinking, right? Longevity, uh, continuance is so important, right? And so I love that when this conversation comes up because it always comes up and we get that feedback. So you gave me some great ways to respond to that. Um, but systems in general, I, I've got four pages of notes here already. This is so awesome. Thank you for this. Um, what I love what you said and what I'd like to get a little bit more clear about is um, that when, and what I wrote down, when you create good systems, when you have good ones, that they're nearly in, in, or should be invisible Right? You don't even notice that they're happening, and this is when, like you just said about the music, that people just think we're randomly throwing things in, or it's just because you personally like them, right? It's your favorite tunes, but that there's a system in so many things that you don't even see it, right? And so I'd like to understand, how does that, how does that work? You know, it, it, what it reminds me of is I used to work for Kettle One Vodka back when I was 20 years old, and the owner from came from Holland and, and spoke to the whole, uh, all of us one day, and he said, and I won't do the Dutch accent in the moment, uh, he said to us, our goal, our number one goal, was to create a product that is odorless and tasteless. And I'm like, what is this dude talking about, right? They already had one of the best top shelf vodkas in the world, but they were going to pure essence, right? They were getting to the essence of the product, 
which mean it had n no flavor, no taste. And I didn't understand that for years until, guess what, until I showed up to this room four years ago going, oh, that's what this guy was talking about, right? And, and so when you're talking about invisible, right, it's not so overly apparent, right? We don't hit you over the head with it. It's just already happening, and you just either uh, work with it or go with it and decide later, right, or just not, right? And so I was wondering how you could maybe expand on that a little bit more, like how does an invisible system really work? By getting the feedback from the participants, what happens is that uh, my hair, speaking of systems, <laughs> I'm such a girl. Anyway, so one of the things that, that, that you need to take a look at the evaluation forms and you need to take a look at what the feedback is. And I've had this conversation with Marshall Thurber, the creator of Money and You and Bobby DePorter, but more with Marshall. And for many years, he really feels that sometimes things are too old, you know? And that's because he's such a genius. He's always creating something new. But a system has to be able to carry you so that you can duplicate it all over the place. So that, I mean, like my friend Terry Tillman says, how can you duplicate, you know, it's about time. This song is about time. I will change it's about time when somebody comes up with a song as powerful as it's about time. Or uh, the one about the children starving that we play. You know, that, that, you know, we are, the words and the music and the intention that John Denver had is very, very powerful. So when, when you know, I, when we play I Want to Live, it's about starving children. And maybe that was the first time that you heard that song. But that's very powerful, and what most people don't understand are things like vibrational. And when you step into a system, like when you do into Money and You, you're stepping into a very powerful M feel, which have been proven. Morphophogenic feels, M feels, they call them. It has been proven to work. So what happens is that that when people have some fantastic idea, which is great, so the feedback will be given to you by the people that attend the programs. To this day, I get stopped by many and new graduates that will either recognize me or will see me somewhere, and they have done money and you, or they've seen the picture or something, they go, oh, are you DC Cordova from money and you? And I go, I am, you know, guilty as charged. And they go, Oh my God, honey, honey, this is the lady that puts on that program, the one, and big hug from the husband or the wife. You changed my spouse's life. Thank you so much. Oh my God, oh, I love it. You know, it, that's raving. That's not saying, I love the program. And of course, I always say, what did you like the most about it? You know, what do 99% of the people say? It's the essence of it, the heart of it. Oh, I learned lots about money. But oh my God, did it make me a better spouse? Did it make me a better whatever? So that's the beauty. It depends on what program you're doing. And we happen to be doing Money and You. So it depends what business you're doing. And you have to really get what it is that your client or your customer really loves about you. The book, Good to Great, these are contextualization systems. Contextualization systems. And what it is in the book, Good to Great, by Jim Collins, he talks about the three circles. Is what, are, what, are, what do people rave about you? Do people rave about you? What are you passionate about? And what is the economic engine of your company? Those are the three circles. So when you set a system in place that fits those three circles, then you will last. We're still considered. I go to many seminars. You see me. You 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 see the conferences that I go to, Eric. You see me. There oh, will yeah. be three thousand people. Everyone they see my money in your banner, they stop by, give me a big hug, and maybe they never met me before because I wasn't at their money in you, and will rave about money in you, and will share with me about how it changed their lives, and and many how successful they became afterwards because the number one challenge in business is people and marketing. People and marketing. And in many ways Money and You could be relabeled as people management, you know, systems. Because that is what we are teaching. So 
so what you what you can learn about systems okay so a system has to be duplicatable and self-correcting you have to have manuals you have to have job descriptions you have to create a contextualization you have to have a feedback system and yes listen I was getting music feedback back in 1984 when we had just been around for five years you know they wanted to put another the latest whatever at the time was around you know I can only have one Lady Gaga one or two Lady Gaga songs Lady Gaga kind of has disappeared already you know what I mean now Madonna I adore Madonna if I could have it my way I would have nothing but Madonna songs and Michael Jackson songs and all this and that well some of them are great but how do you replace hero okay so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take a look at the feedback that your people give you and ultimately it's the evaluation forms that we get and that's the conversation that even with the creator I have with Marshall I said Edward Stemming taught us listen to your customers listen to your clients and they will tell you when to correct not to the people that have come back to assist to be entertained or to make changes please forgive me for this because we so thank you for being there but let us serve you by teaching you distinctions experientially about systems and you will have an ability to be able to go oh my god oh I see that system that we just have right there oh like for instance somebody came back and says we should have a games master we didn't have a games master up until about eight or ten years ago well maybe fifteen years ago Di Butler would remember that one and that one came out of Singapore so maybe a little bit longer than that we didn't have games masters for about a decade or maybe fifteen years and then it came in it came in and then and then we wonder how we never thought about having a games master job description when all they did was organize games well, that person has to be very, very good. You can't put a high D to do Games Master. Even they have to have a little bit of C, a little bit of S on them. So what happens is that there's different job descriptions that have been created through the years that are corrections that are very valid. So we really love your corrections. and But we'll take a look at it and we'll see which ones are valid, which are not valid. But the biggest value that you can come and get out of Money and You is for you to learn the systems that we're using experientially and then use those in your company and in your organizations and people management. Because there's so many feelings that come up for people and that is one of the most valuable things. You have to have feeling systems in your company. A lot of people don't want to face this. They don't want to. I don't know what it is. Some of the most unsuccessful companies and uh, people fail over and over again in business because they don't put in place people systems on how to handle their feelings. You have to have a system in place for people to know when it's their stuff and when it's your stuff. And um, like for instance, one of one of the lines that people use with me a lot it's like well I'm gonna give you some feedback because I know that everybody's afraid to give you feedback so I'm gonna give you the feedback and I'm sitting there going clearly this person doesn't know how much feedback I get as a matter of fact I hire a mentor every <laughs> I've always had a mentor since I was 26 years old that gives me feedback but that is a conversation now that I know they're talking to their parent they're no longer being present with me. They're talking to an authority figure and they feel good about telling the authority figure how wrong they are or how bad they are and all this and that. Now what happens for me is that I get to be really present with the person and I allowed for that contribution to be made and it's so interesting because by the time they're done giving me whatever feedback and I take it in and I talk to them and I really look at it and then I say you know I think I'll make a correction on this but would you be okay if I don't make a correction on this because actually there's a whole bunch of other things that I have to take into consideration would that be okay with you at that point there is a healing for them and there's a healing for me so the system that's invisible 
It's just allowing people to do, and I feel like saying with you, as the leader, as the authority figure. But in the old days, when I was really young, I used to, you know, sometimes, or if I'm tired, if I'm in reaction and I don't want to deal with it, or I think that somebody, I go into my ego and I go, you are, oh my God, you've been doing freaking personal work for 30 years and you can't tell this is your stuff. At this point, there's no listening. And the person will get madder and angrier with me and then will say, you have no room for me to be heard. And at that point, they're right. I didn't have any room. As a leader, you have to have room to listen to people and really be there with them. And that is a system. Hmm. Anything you'd like to say about that, Eric? That was awesome. Well, I have a question. So we've been talking a lot about, you know, what we, what the opportunity that, that serving on logistics will give you in regards to systems and that they have the opportunity to carry over into your life and your business. How would one... Uh, and myself included, how would you start a system? How do you get it going in the beginning when maybe you're just, again, like me, a solo come entrepreneur? Come to Money and You and take all the systems that, that I teach you. And uh, Money and You teaches a bunch of systems. The business success model, okay. having a master, a niche, leverage. See, that's invisible to you. That's one of the best systems. Yeah, there and you go. Have niche and uh, leverage through an aligned team which creates synergy. That is the best money system on the planet. But most people don't see it as a system. Well, it is completely a system. As a matter of fact, you guys, go to, um, and and uh, you can go to, you know, just go to info at moneyandyou.com and Jane or I will send you a link to the business success model and do a download on it. I can't remember the, the, the URL to send you there and we will, you just opt in and download it. That's a fantastic system. I love that. The, the rules of the game. I, this I is my, sorry, this is my deck, and here it is right here. So here's my yeah. mini deck, and it's sitting right here on my desk. So it's rules of the game. Okay, I'm going to tell you the system. Rules of the game. I Having, of course, the fruit bowl to hold the rules of the game. Having a purpose. Having a mission. Rules of the game. Policies, how you're going to work together, which is the same as that. Clear job descriptions, being very clear on the DISC profile because you want to put the right person in the right places. And a lot of times for a few years, I can't remember how many years, I would only put people in, in jobs that I would think that only high Ds could do that, only high Cs. Well, something magnificent would happen when I would put a high D to be a tr uh, an instructor's assistant. They would go crazy because they're not good assistants. They like to be bosses. They don't like to be serving someone else. Well, it would bring up their S's and C's that they didn't even know that they had. And then all of a sudden, they realized they really liked doing this. By the time they left four days later, that whole side of them had come up. And we can have, you know, Carol Dysart in this continuing series do a whole thing on this that she can train us on this so that people can see how their, their profile really comes up as they do different jobs. So I decided, no, sometimes I do train you guys to go ahead and ask just for information only, but it doesn't take long for you to see the high S's and the high C's and all this and that. You know, the C's, we are always quality controlling, always, always, it's in our nature. So one of the things that you want to do then is you want to take a look at all the systems in Money and You, the program itself, how we apply those to logistics, and then how you apply those into your own program and this is why I want to thank all of you that have assisted that have taken so much out of it and the leadership skills that you can get out of even working your way you know I love um, talking about Sean Yiming, Sean Ricardo I don't know whether he's watching this but he has worked his way to being a great Chinese business school for entrepreneurs program director and I met Sean at, uh, in the early 2000, 1999, 2000, with Globe Success. He went to work there. So we've been around each other for 14 years. To see his leadership now, this is the man that, I mean, just to see him, how he's been coming up, coming up, coming up. And that leadership has now then gone into his real life. And he literally has gone through a personality shift that has been so profound for me to see the ability to speak up, the ability to think 
on your feet and the ability to take a look at what is the emergency. One of, one of the most amazing things in my brain that I have learned from logistics has been how to handle emergencies when there's a true emergency. And I become literally a robot. And this I learned from logistics. My brain, when there is a true emergency, when there's a uh, the potential that somebody could die, that there's a fire. I mean, we're talking about life crisis now. Real deal. Uh, very serious stuff. My brain, I become the terminator. And it begins to scan, and time goes very slow. And then it goes, it looks at all the resources immediately. It is the most fascinating thing to watch myself when there's a true emergency. And then I move so on purpose, so purposefully. And, and so I have saved lives because of this. I'll never, I mean, I could give you some samples, but I won't go into it. And then I immediately go into what is the, what is the, obje the object that I have to do, save somebody's life what is going to be the fastest way that I'm going to do this and how can I accomplish that the fastest most efficient and use all the resources that I have available to me and it, and I literally pick up the phone and it's like as serious as a heart attack which was almost a heart attack my friend was having it was another thing and it was like purposely speaking very clear and what were my options and all this and that and then all these things that occur and all the taken into all those resources in my subconscious mind and then I started noticing that I do that in emergencies in my own business when I feel threatened when I'm upset when I'm hurt when I am perturbating like crazy I will go okay I am not doing well right now I'm very upset I'm very hurt I'm very angry I'm all these things I feel threatened I feel like I'm gonna lose money in you I'm gonna lose my home I'm gonna lose my love I'm gonna lose my sweetie I'm gonna lose my health I'm gonna die my mother's gonna die you know my sister's gonna die I take deep breaths and I literally go into logistics mode I am not kidding you Eric and I immediately go into systems based organization in my head and then I begin to look at all the resources that I have, all the things that need to be accomplished, what are all the things that need to be done, and I know that all that comes from logistics. Yeah, you're, so what I'm hearing you saying is that logistics is not emotional, right? Systems are not emotional, right? No, the, correct. That's why the 94% rule is, is in effect here, because we're an emotional beings. We're nothing but our, you know, hopefully we're not our emotions, but we're very emotional. Yes. Where then in that moment of dread, terror, terror, fear in our reptilian brain, and, and we're looking for survival, we're, we yes. might make the wrong choices. And so if we rely on the systems that are in place, yes. they can get us through, right? You can really yes. get through this moment by breathing and going right into logistics mode, right? I love, yes. I love the visual of Terminator, right? Because he was no motion. He was he was a killer, but he wasn't bad, right? He just do, 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 do. scanning. And that's how he, scanning. Was. he was scanning. Yeah. I, I still that. watch Terminator just to see that part where yeah. he's scanning, scanning, and that's what the brain does. That's what your right. brain does. Next time you are in an emergency, God forbid, but we all get into emergencies, and I just watch yourself and what you do. I just had a, a little emergency the other day when somebody took a stop sign. Uh, at 40, 50 miles per hour in a little tiny neighborhood, and what happened? And and my body took over. And you know, we were talking with my spiritual mentor, and basically, you know, I could have been killed. And it was like absolutely, and it was like something. So I, we say my angel did it, but it actually was also my brain. And I stepped on the brake before I saw it. What I watched was my foot going on the brake. And then the car, of course, lost control because, you know, I stepped on the brake so so fast, even though I wasn't going that fast. But when you step on a brake like that and then watch my behavior and then everything kicked in that I know because I'm an excellent driver, but I think anybody else would have been badly, badly hurt. I shook for about an hour afterwards, but it was the most fascinating thing because everything came into being. So logistics is about empowering you, and I'm going to take an extra 10 or 15 minutes here um, that I would like to continue to speak about it, and this is part of being in logistics. 
we are sharing with you information and we're going to put corrections in place and this one is going to be timing because we're getting into places that are very important for you to understand the importance of systems that you can learn from others apply them to your life and then that's where productivity comes in this is where Edward Stemming you must study Edward Stemming he had um, a book that um, uh, please forgive me and I really need to look it up again that we used to talk about quite a bit a long long time ago in Money and You which was the 10 rules of Edward Stemming which were the 10 productivity the best productivities I'm sure that now in the internet you can find it and some of his key teachings but one of them was to be able to have systems in place to measure everything to be able to see everything how was it going to work so we don't start money in you and go oh I hope this money in you is going to work no 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 no. it doesn't happen that way it is going to work it's the same thing with the business school for entrepreneurs and I lead I am the contextualization queen of the business schools that I lead which are most of the Chinese business schools and that is a very tough environment a very tough market and I know exactly what needs to be done, but every single day is correction from the feedback that I am getting from the participants. But part of the system is for me not to buy into people's stuff, and to buy into people's emotions, and to buy into people's uh, fears, into considerations, because at that point, then the system's in place in order for my program to create the level of results that I know are going to create are going to go ahead and go out the window. So, for instance, there was a money in your graduate, Brad Sugars, uh, Action International, and he took a game from us uh, from uh, business school where we really press down on fines. That's a very sophisticated, you better know what you're doing. And when people, you know, are not going to pay fines, I mean, you have to be so clear. And, um, and, you know, he had 15 people, very successful, very upset people that left his program in the middle of it, that had paid a lot of money and asked for their money back and kind of ruined his reputation for a while, where 15 people worked out on the fines uh, situation, where we've never had that happen to us. And that's because, you know, we, we are very clear on how to deal with that. So the level of beingness is supported by the physical systems and it is that piece that is going to keep your organization going and now let me just use a big example in the world right now let's just take Apple computers okay so what happened was when Stephen Jobs died if you know anything about systems we knew that there was going to be a couple of years corrections that were going to occur because there was no way that you could duplicate the system of Stephen Jobs. He was like a system. He was an invisible contextualization system. His brilliance and also his creativity and you know the designer. I mean, he was an amazing guy. And we knew anybody that understands systems knew that Apple was going to take a dip and it was going to take them a couple of years for them to come back and they were going to have to come back with something else. And as we know, Apple Computer is recuperating, but not in the United States. They're making a lot more money overseas than in the United States. And I don't know how much they're going to recuperate. You know, I watch them in the financial news and this and that. And of course, they're making more money than, you know, than God, but not as much money as they used to make. But right there, you can see that the leaders of that organization didn't do enough to duplicate Stephen Jobs' system, how he led them. That is not just leadership. And I have had this conversation with some very successful people that hire a lot of people. It's not just leadership. This is systems. Let's take a look at, at the same thing with an, another example of system is um, uh, Zuckerberg, the guy from Facebook. He tried to take his company public and didn't win the 
uh, respect of Wall Street. He tried to go into a system, being a young, hot, you know, into the new industry, Facebook, social media, which that system, the financial system of Wall Street was not ready. It wasn't until he brought in um, some major players after they had some very big learning experiences and they said this is these are the rules of the game on how you play in this system and now I was reading about them two days ago they had their best I think month and you know they made some outrageous amount of money because he had training and began to understand that is invisible so now with these distinctions that I'm giving you the assignment that I want to give to all of you watching this, listening to this, is to start looking at the systems in place. Nothing happens by accident. And, you know, I, uh, I'm part of the book Think and Grow Rich for Women with Sharon Lecter, who, of course, her systems were the ones that created Robert's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, her and Robert's book, in being the bestsellers that they were and that whole series. You know, he sold that company a long time ago. They both sold that company a long time ago. And, uh, you know, and Robert went on to do, you know, his real estate and other things. But he's out of the education business. Has been out for quite a few years. And most people don't know that. Because part of the system is to have him look like he's in there. But Sharon Lecter has gone on with publishing because she has the system. And this book, Think and Grow Rich for Women, which is, by the way, amazing and you all must read it. I'm in page 212 or something like that. I feel so honored she gave me quite a bit of, I got a whole page. That is fantastic. It's amazing. And, and she, how she's working with us in the background, and I'm watching her do this, and I go, that's why I haven't published the money in your book. I needed to learn from Sharon how to do the Think and Grow Rich book. I am telling you, it's completely a system. So you learn system from others, and this is a distinction that you will get as you learn how to take those systems from money and you, because you're teaching your subconscious patterns of thinking, and this is what I learned from my masters and from learning system from others. Anything you'd like to say, Eric? Man, that was so good. That, I was hoping you would leave us with some kind of assignment, what we could uh, look for, what we could apply, and start yeah. thinking towards that now, and then, and then excited to come towards, you know, in August as well. Yeah, that was awesome. It was fantastic. So if you know that you don't know systems, then you will learn about them. When, when we began to study Deming in the early 80s, I knew that I didn't know systems, even though I had been in the criminal court systems, I had been, you know, looking at systems, I thought I was. The minute that I said I don't know systems, I began to learn systems. And that was what allowed us to be able to have so many established one of the only organizations that I don't have to be on the road all the time. The greatest gurus, including Tony Robbins, Harv Ecker, they have to be on the road. They have never created the systems in place to work without them. If they leave, the organization stops. They can only do so much, but without them, the organization stops. It does, including, you know, I know that Harv Soul peaks potential, but if you know much about the organization, there are some pretty interesting things happening because it was based on Harv. He's excellent. But once you set an organization that is, that is people-centric, at that point, you don't, long, you don't have a system in place. You have systems, some of them, but not a system for an organization that's going to work by itself and that you can go to the beach for life if you want to. That's what you want to learn. Awesome. Awesome. What, well, we, we're right at just an hour, and um, this is great. What can you, anything else you want to leave us with uh, going forward? And, and um, what we might, you know, I'd love to do this again if the opportunity comes up. And continue to, you know, how can logistics, i got a question, how can logistics really be, you know, so excited to come? What, what can you tell them that they're going to, you know, one more thing, right? Just 
I think they already know, but what else from you can they get to be so excited about August and when it comes up? The biggest thing you need to understand is this is the advance, advance, advance money and you that you're going to be learning experientially. I want to continue with this education series. I, you know, in a few years time, I am going to be, you know, involved in just nothing but humanitarian work and, you know, I have my humanitarian, you know, things that I have started and I'm also going to be going through a whole renewable energy business. We need to save the planet, you know, uh, quite a bit. We're moving quickly into a place that we don't want to be at, so I, I have to pick up some speed in that field and that's why I'm working with Wang Ming. But one of the things that I think that I'm doing is that I'm leaving my legacy on this Google Hangouts. I'm beginning to do more and more of them and so I want to continue with this uh, with this education for logistics and I want to have bring in different masters to teach different things so we soon we're going to have Carol Dysart talk about DISC to all of you and then we can bring other masters that will teach us different distinctions and this will be given just to people who are doing logistics we want to you know give this to people who are uh, people in logistics and we can have the opportunity to be able to work with you privately and to be able to, um, to, to help you in all the different distinctions that we'll get out of you supporting us and you taking the systems into your organizations. And so um, this is a way for me to leave a legacy. You know, I probably want to have Di Butler. Di Butler is the ultimate program director, and uh, she knows so much about systems, and she's in the legal field too. And uh, I'm sure she will be able to give us distinctions on putting systems in writing. I mean, we are now opening up a wonderful, uh, heavenly Pandora's box because uh, systems is something that most people really do not have an understanding on and it's, it's really interesting when I tell people that they take it very personally very personally and um, the minute that you take something personally it's um, your brain shuts down yeah the minute that, that it brings up a feeling for you they know that somebody just pushed your button and mm -hmm. instead of getting mad at the messenger just go wow you just pushed my button this is so wonderful I'm gonna go and figure this out more that's a personal system that really works. You go, great, I'm going to go learn, why did you push my buttons? Well, heck, you want to put money-making systems into your body. You want to, you know, you want to put them into your consciousness so that you can retire. Don't wait to be, you know, that you're going to have to be slipping around suitcases when you're 90 years old because you didn't take care of your old age. You, you learn a lot of money principles in Money in You, now you also need to know organizational principles and of course I, we want you to continue with us, you need to attend the business school for entrepreneurs now that's an experience right there because you learn a whole bunch of other systems, uh, business systems that are so extraordinary from so many masters and then you know download my business um, uh, the business model that will give you the link to it and you know we have money making systems and then remember that one of the things that we'd love to give you is when you come to assist full time to Money and You, you always can bring one of your associates for cost only. You know, here in Southern California, we can extend that. Uh, the other promoters, they have tremendous expenses. So we all do. So just, you know, give us a call and we can let you know how much we can bring your choice of person. That's one of the gifts that we want to give you for assisting. So I just wanted to close by saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of all of our hearts. We go all the way back to our ancestors, which includes Black Mr. Fuller, includes Marshall Thurber, Bobby D. Porter, every promoter, every program director, every high L, every teacher, all of the instructors, all of the instructors in training, all the people that have served in logistics, every single person that has ever lifted one finger in order for money and you to continue doing this work, we're grateful from the bottom of our heart. Aloha nui loa, as we say in Hawaii. Eric, yeah, anything you'd like to say? I do. Yeah, um, I want to just thank you. 
Okay, and thank you for not only taking this time today, but taking the time over the over the 30 plus years that you've been doing this, and you're still in this conversation, still with this uh, the same energy, right? If not even more, and being even more clear, and still now with this, what you just declared of, you know, this awesome opportunity with this technology we have to leave this legacy. Here you are right now, but this is going to live on and on and on, and just thank you for this, where that comes from in you, and I know you're not going to claim it to you as source and all that comes through, but just to know uh, how much that we love you and how much you're uh, changing our lives and the logistics team and how much we're expanding out and keeping this money in you uh, here in America going and thriving and um, just being bigger and bigger as much as the vision that we can all grasp. So thank you for, your, for all of that. And thank you. You're very welcome. Well, one of the systems to have in place, and I'm so glad you remember this at the last minute, it's always perfect. One of the systems to have in place is that you take full responsibility for everything that happens in your business, in your organization. Ultimately, when uh, Marshall and Bobby, when I took over on July 8th, 1985, that's my anniversary, by the way, that's my own personal anniversary of when I... 100% of the rights of all the accelerated programs were given to me as a gift because I had to earn it. Very, very hard work. I started working on November 21st, 1979 was when I received 50% of money in you. And one of the things that occurred for me was that I made a commitment that this work would continue for eons of time. The principles, whatever needed to happen, and that I was willing to be responsible for it. So when something doesn't work, take a look at the system. You are not wrong. It's the system. So the system could be that you didn't make a decision to do something. So put in place the system that you are going to make that decision. What are the things that you're going to personally do in order to make your life work, your business work, for you to be wealthy, prosperous, healthy, successful, and make this a better world. And use all the technology that you have around you to make that work. That is a system, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So just remember that you're ultimately responsible for your company, for your business. And the fact that I was given this gift, <clears throat> that I won the lottery way back in the days, and I'm forever grateful for my mentors and everyone that supported me. It's the greatest gift that I have received. I have won the lottery. And it's my responsibility what to do with the lottery win winnings. So thank you so much. And for those of you in America, for all Americans around the world, happy 4th of July. And for those of you that don't celebrate the 4th of July by tradition, Remember that 4th of July is the day of freedom. So for me, I have reframed 4th of July. 4th of July is for me to have freedom from negative conditioning, freedom from negative thoughts, freedom from self-judgment, freedom from scarcity, freedom from fear, freedom from believing things that don't empower me, and freedom from everything that could get in the way of my fulfilling my life purpose which will create a magnificent life. Again, aloha nui loa. Thank you very much, and thank you for having been with us. See you real, real soon. Bye.